Oh, we gotta talk Draculas, Deadites, Weed Smoking Witches, Adorable AI, Creepy Kiwis, and Evangelical Exorcist, all in our wrap up to the Overlook Film Festival 2023. So kicking the festival off in a big way was Renfield with a Q&A session with Nick Cage. And actually Bob was able to record that Q&A session and he's gonna be uploading that onto our Patreon page. So you can check that out there. Also, we are going to be covering Renfield in full the week after it drops, which is April 14th. So we'll be covering that on our main podcast channel. So that's gonna be a full review. Also, the boys are going to be covering it on their bonus episode, which will be on our main feed. And they're going to be talking about that as part of their Overlook Film Festival wrap up. That's going to be spoiler free. So you've got a ton of Renfield coverage. I actually was not able to screen this one. They didn't throw out any screeners for this one, but I was grilling the boys and they said that actually they were really impressed by it, that it was a lot funnier than they expected and generally a lot better than they expected uh, based on what they got from the trailer. So we will be covering Renfield in all different kinds of ways. So keep an eye out for that. All right, so the biggest one that I was anticipating from this film festival was Evil Dead Rise. And again, this is not one that I was able to get a screener for, unfortunately, ugh, the curses of living in South Korea. But I was waiting for the boys to go in. I asked them a ton of questions. And the main things I wanted to know was how this kind of stacked up to 2013's Evil Dead. Did it have a similar kind of tone? Was it as brutal and those kind of things? And they did confirm that it is. It still kind of keeps that same kind of tone, brutality. So I was really excited about that because I loved Evil Dead from 2013. So I'm really excited about that. This is gonna be another one that they will be talking about spoiler free on their Overlook Film Festival wrap up, which is gonna be a bonus episode on our main channel. And then we are going to be covering it on our podcast in full, spoilers and all, on a future episode of Straight Chillin', so keep an eye out for that. All right, so one of the films I actually was able to watch and probably the best one I watched from the film festival was Godless, The Eastfield Exorcism. Now this is an Australian based horror film and at the beginning it does say based on a true story and without going into too much of the backstory of what is actually true, it really reminded me of the exorcism of Emily Rose in a lot of ways, especially if you remove the kind of legal aspect of it. It's more about like what actually happened at the event and then there's a little bit of the kind of like consequences after the fact. Um, I think that this was really unnerving in a couple different ways. One of them being kind of like a societal point of view, how other people's kind of decisions and mindsets can like really affect your life in a negative, horrifying type of way. And I think it's a really good entry into the exorcist subgenre of horror, but I also think it would be interesting to people who really like religious type of horror or spiritual type of horror, like uh, Saint Maud or Midnight Mass, those kind of things. So if those subgenres are something that you're typically into, I think you will really enjoy this film and general audiences and general fans of horror. I think that this is a good watch for 2023. All right, the next one I wanted to talk about was The Artifice Girl, which kind of feels like a really fleshed out episode of Black Mirror. This one is sci-fi and technology based, and it really takes its premise very seriously and kind of dives into a lot of different philosophical ideas about technology and AI and how humans interact with it. This is not a spectacle type of film though. It's really dialogue driven and actually most of the movie takes place in one room. And even when they kind of deviate from that, it's just kind of in another room. Um, it does play with an aspect of time. And I do think that this film was able to keep my attention even through its slow pace. And I do think it is based on some really good dialogue and interesting ideas that really has kind of like stuck with me and I've been thinking about since I watched this film. So if you're into sci-fi horror or not even just horror in general, just kind of like a dark premise surrounding technology, if you like Black Mirror, I think you will really dig on this film. So Trim Season was a complete surprise for me. 
This is a movie that is based on some young people who are trying to make some extra money by working on an isolated weed farm up in the mountains. Now, typically, when you think about weed movies, you think of kind of comedy. I feel like a lot of horror movies, if they're going to use weed, they typically kind of go the comedic route. And one thing I really appreciate about this film was that it didn't. Um, it doesn't take itself necessarily too seriously, but it really strikes a good middle ground and was not something I was expecting because they kind of really set the weed aspect up pretty hard in the beginning. And I was kind of waiting for those really goofy beats and they didn't come. And I, it was really refreshing. I really appreciated that. It actually kind of dove into a couple different subgenres. Obviously, the isolated location plays into it, you know, the kind of people having power over you in this isolated kind of place that you don't belong. But also a lot of folklore was worked into this film. And I really like that, especially because it was complemented by the setting and the weed aspect as well. And so I think people are really going to be surprised and dig on trim season this year. All right, so the next movie I wanna talk about is Mr. Organ, and this is actually a documentary out of New Zealand. And it focuses on the director kind of coming into contact with this type of con man, and how that con man kind of gets wrapped up in his life, and how he kind of regrettably decides to make a film about this man because he gets involved in his daily life. So the kind of idea that I got from this film is that even without the traditional sense of power or money or influence, how just a regular type of person could essentially ruin yours and other people's lives just out of sense of enjoyment with messing with people. And that was really troubling because I feel like in my life, I have probably experienced some people like this and was just lucky to not have them completely wrapped up in my life. But the man that this film focuses on really bothers me and to the point where I feel like watching this film gives me this uneasiness in that like he's gonna know and even in talking about this film he's gonna seek like some kind of vengeance on me or something like that. It was truly troubling and I think very effective and cool to see something like this coming out of New Zealand. So that's all from my Overlook Film Festival wrap up 2023. I really appreciated getting the screeners because it allowed me to kind of participate with the festival even though I'm living in South Korea right now. Bob and Randy though were both at the festival. They saw a lot more films than me. They are going to be doing a full wrap up bonus episode on our main feed. So keep an eye out for that wherever you get your podcast. Also, we're going to be covering several of these films in full on our main show, like Renfield and Evil Dead Rise, so keep an eye out for that. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to get some weekly horror content from the Straight Chilling Podcast. And until next time, don't forget to keep chilling.